ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. It is Wednesday, December 7th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan, here until 6 o'clock. We will get your text in this hour. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Coming up this hour, we're going to speak with Ryan Crisp. He's the Associate Athletics Director, Annual Giving, Ticket Sales, Fan Engagement, Marshall's in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. We're going to talk to him about what the ticket packages look like for those of you who haven't maybe got your tickets yet, some of the options for you, what some of the the events that will be going on, Big Green, everything that happens at the bowl. He's going to talk to us about that. As I mentioned, we'll get your text in. Again, the number 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Tomorrow night we've got basketball for you. Marshall taking on Duquesne. This is going to be a good one. I think this will be the best test yet for the Thundering Herd. I don't know about Duquesne if this will be the best test for them. Uh, They played Kentucky earlier in the year. They did okay against Kentucky. I mean, they didn't win it. They lost 77-52, but they did okay. I mean, Kentucky, despite maybe a couple of uh, missteps here or there, Kentucky's still really good. But Duquesne has played South Carolina State, North Florida, Alabama State, UC Santa Barbara. Also played Colgate. That was at Akron. So they got some early wins there. So they've got a win streak going on. So the herd is right now on a seven-game win streak. Duquesne's on a six-game win streak. So something's got to give. That's coming up tomorrow. We've got the game for you here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Did I read this right first? First road game since November 17th. So it's it's been a while, a little bit for the Thundering Herd. Three straight on the road, then back at the Henderson Center to get the new year going. So looking forward to it. We'll talk more about that later on. We've got a couple of things to talk about. Let's stay with uh, the Kentucky themes since I mentioned them a minute ago. Let's stay with that first and foremost. The transfer portal will give you, and the transfer portal will take from you. It will give and it will take. Giveth and taketh. Kentucky quarterback Will Levis is entering the skip bowl conversation part of his career now. He is going to enter the NFL draft. He is skipping the bowl game. So makes that announcement on where else? Social media that he will declare for the NFL draft and skip the bowl game. It's the Music City Bowl against Iowa. Why is he doing that? Well, he is projected as a first-round selection. 65% of his passes completed, 2,406 yards, 19 touchdowns on 10 interceptions, 11 games for Kentucky. Penn State transfer won 17 games over two seasons at Kentucky. So on social media, he thinks the coaches, his teammates, fans expressed his gratitude and, of course, friendship, all of that, all of that. Here's what he said. If I have one thing to hold in my heart from my time in Lexington, it's that Kentucky has my back and that everything ahead of me wouldn't be possible without the support and encouragement I received along the way. Most importantly, we won some incredibly memorable ball games in my college career. So more and more you're going to see this. It's not that he doesn't think that the bowl game's a big deal. He's looking ahead, keeping himself healthy, making sure that he is a a commodity with value. That's where we're at now in college athletics. These young men are, in some phases of their career, they're commodities. They're going to market themselves. We have entered that age now. There's no overarching loyalty anymore to, oh, hey, you know what? I can do that after we play the bowl game. If a quarterback, if a player feels that, okay, 
the bowl game is going to damage my potential. Dam- yeah, why do I put myself on the line here? The next thing for me is the NFL, and it's just the Music City Bowl. Now, if this was the college football playoff, this was the Rose Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, the Sugar Bowl, right, the Orange Bowl, it's a big big bowl game, right? If, if it was one of the big ones, you're playing in the national championship, you're playing for you're playing in a playoff spot. That expands to 12. We might see more players decide to stick around and also keep this in mind. Now that we expand this thing, what's going to be more important? Well, it's going to be the the 12 that play. Maybe we'll get to 16 one day, but we got the 12 that are going to play. So those games are going to be more important. All of a sudden, does that lessen even further the bowls? Are we going to have too many bowls? I say yes, we will have too many bowls. We will have too many bowls. But what does that mean? Yeah. Are we going to see bowls? Are we going to see bowls maybe eventually phase out a little bit? The more prosperous bowls will continue. The long-standing traditional bowls will continue. The older games, the ones that have been around have a little bit more financial stability, have a little bit more backing. Are those games going to stick around? Is there a place for the Bulls here in the upcoming future? I think the playoff is the way to go. If you're playing for something, you're playing for a championship, right? That's Now, if if you opt out like, you know what? I don't want to compete for a championship. I don't want to, yeah, if if you were quarterback of a team that was heading to the playoff and you opted out. Oh, yeah, that would be ugly. Would it not? So, good luck to him. Good luck to him. Hopefully, you know, he's going to have a great NFL career hailing from the University of Kentucky. And of course, again, the uh, transfer portal giveth, the transfer portal taketh away. And also the whole concept of, you know what? I'm not um I'm not sticking around for the bowl game. You come in, you get what you need, and you leave. And if that means sticking around for the bowl game, so be it. If that means not sticking around for the bowl game, so be it as well. That's what you're gonna see. It's the new reality. I'm just surprised we haven't seen more of it yet for Marshall. Players that you know what, I don't like it here. I didn't get the playing time I wanted to get. You know, I don't want to sit and wait. I don't want to be, you know, in the shadows. I don't want to be behind someone for too long. I want to be able to go and play. I mean, how many how many quarterbacks are going to go into the portal and how many of them are going to find a new landing spot? And again, you keep in mind you keep in mind that there's a reason for some of these players going into the portal. So it's going to be a, it's going to be really important that when you look at portal players, you're looking at them and finding out, okay, what's the reason they're there? What's the real situation? Is it I just wanted more playing time? Is it one of those situations where maybe there's some opportunities uh, elsewhere? Hey, if you got a loaded you got a loaded position and you can't crack it. Maybe you're going to look elsewhere. I, I don't know. Maybe, again, maybe it could be hardship. Maybe it could be family. It, there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of good reasons. There's a lot of reasons. I just want to improve. I just want to go and play. Or, hey, I, I need to go somewhere else because, you know, I need to be closer to home. You know, there are a multitude of reasons why. And maybe just maybe the player's not good enough. you got to find out. Okay, is this player really it's, – it's, he's in the program – but he's not starting, he's not playing, and he's getting out. So is it because it's impossible to crack that 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 starting position? Or is it the player's just not good enough? So many reasons. But we turn our attention to Marshall and its bowl game. Ryan Crisp joins me on the other side of our break. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. 
In less than two weeks, Marshall will take the field against UConn in the Myrtle City Bowl and tell us more about how Herd fans can be a part of that. Is the Associate Athletics Director for Annual Giving, Ticket Sales, and Fan Engagement, Ryan Crisp. He, he liked it the first time he was here, so he's back for more. Good to talk to you again. Um, busy time for you. I, I know you like it this, this time of year with the bowl game. Yeah, for sure, Paul. Thanks for having me on again, and it's uh, it's a fun time. And you know, men's basketball is playing great. Women's basketball put up 104 points a couple nights ago, and now we got the bowl game. So it's a it's a fun time to be a part of the program for sure. So, ticket sales for the bowl game. Can I get a ticket for this? Still, I mean, is this thing already sold out? How are we doing on that? No, you you can still get a ticket. I would suggest if you are planning on going um, and you want to support Marshall to buy within the next couple of days. Um, you know, the, the first day was very strong. We sold out of our three premium sections that we had by two o'clock on the first day. And now, you know, with only having the one ticket option, they are going super fast. And, um, so it's been really, really strong. If, if everything stays as planned, you know, it'll be either the highest or the second highest number of tickets we've sold for a bowl game in the last 10 to 15 years and last, you know, as far as I can know. Um, and so it's really, it's really cool. Obviously Myrtle beach is, a great destination for our fans and a place that, um, you know, West Virginia residents know well. And I think we have a lot of retirees in the area. Um, so it's, it's a great place for us. And the UConn matchup is, is perfect for us. So it's really exciting and, and ticket sales are going really strong. So a couple more days and then um, you're probably anticipating that uh, tickets are going to be gone. you think there'll be any uh, chance for uh, opening up any more seats or is once your allotment's gone, it's gone? Yeah, I think we would be able to get some more from the bowl. Now, whether we sell those through Marshall or not, you know, to, to be determined. Um, just with the sheer number of tickets we sold, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of processing within a short period. You know, for a football season, you plan for nine months for those tickets. And, you know, um, it's just a lot easier to process for a bowl game. You find out on Sunday night where you're going, and in three days, you, you got to build everything and get everything processed, and the tickets got to get to you. And, it's just a lot of uh, a lot of stuff behind the scenes that needs to happen. So once we're, once we're done, we you know, assuming the bowl still has some tickets, uh, we can probably direct fans to the bowl to purchase more tickets if if we get to that point. Why is it important that people buy their tickets through you? Uh, you see tickets being sold everywhere. What's the advantage going through you? Are there better seats? I know the Marshall has uh, a vested interest as far as financial success if the tickets come through you but you know are these the better tickets better vantage point of course you'll be sitting with herd fans you know what are some of the reasons why it's best to come through you first yeah first and foremost it is a better seat um buying through us also um you will be with marshall fans uh you'll be on our sideline all all important things um but the most important thing is that you know anytime you go to a bowl game there may be this misconception that you know, you're, you're profiting from it or that the bowl covers all of your expenses, but that's not true. We have expenses that we incur. And so buying tickets through Marshall, we receive a percentage of that revenue. Um, and we're able to put that back into the bowl game to make sure that our student athletes uh, have a great experience and are able to enjoy their, you know, their four days in Myrtle Beach to the fullest. Are you able to expand on that a little bit? Because there is a misconception that – if you uh, you get invited to a bowl, there's a huge payout, and you know it's all profit. You know whatever um, whatever the cut is, you know there's profit here, and that's why you got a jockey for different bowls here. That's sort of not how it works. Yeah, it's not. You know there there's you know different uh, avenues that help you out in terms of the bowl um, does help you a little bit. The conference helps you a little bit, um, and then also there's some. You know, we, we place it in our budget to make sure that we cover our expenses that way as well. Um, and so, you know, supporting um, buying tickets through us. You know, if you can't come to the game, we have a donation ticket link uh, where you can buy tickets through us and we're still able to receive the revenue from those. Those tickets are then, uh, first and foremost, donated to Marshall students who request tickets. Uh, any full-time Marshall student is able to get two free tickets to the game. They just need to email tickets at marshall.edu. Uh, we have a, a very strong list, um, by far the most students we've ever taken to a bowl game in recent history. Um, and so we need to sell some more donation tickets to be able to cover those for students who plan on going. You know, after, after we get the student allotment taken care of, those donation tickets will then go uh, to local 
Myrtle Beach Charities. Um, you know, I know Chad Pennington has the First and Ten Foundation, um, and he always steps up and, and buys some tickets and gets some T-shirts for some local kids to come to the game. And, you know, living in Myrtle Beach, they may know of Marshall, but they may know, not know a whole lot about Marshall. Um, and so it's great exposure for, for Marshall for uh, possibly some future members of the herd. So the tickets that are going to students first are all donation. That's not coming out of the how, – how is that working? Because just to give tickets away, you know, that's, that's not cheap. It's not, but, you know, the, the more people that support and purchase the donation tickets, you know, whether you're going to the game and you want to help or if you can't go to the game uh, and still purchase tickets, um, you know, that basically covers the cost for us. Um, and so at the end of the day, it's a wash in our students, uh, which we need to engage more and we need to find a way to get into our games, get them active. Uh, for all of our sports, you know, this is a great way for them to, to connect with the athletic department and connect with our student athletes um, and have a, have a great time in Myrtle Beach. What are some of the travel options uh, that the university, maybe the athletic department, are, are looking at working on? Is there anything that's specifically coming through the athletic department that people need to know about if they want to travel to the game? Yeah, in terms of actual travel packages from Huntington to Conway, there's nothing um, that we're able to do. We looked into a bus trip. We looked into a charter and just financially it didn't make sense for the donor or for the fan to do that. Um, and so, you know, you can, you're more than welcome to stay at the team hotel, um, which is the Marriott at sand dunes. I know last I heard there's less than 90 rooms left. Um, that was yesterday. So it may be even worse than that now. Um, so that, that hotel is filling up quickly. Um, but you know, once you get there, you'll, you'll be able to hang out with the players and the coaches. They'll obviously be hanging around and, um, it'll be a good experience for you. Um, you know, and then once you, once you get to Myrtle Beach, um, you know, we're going to offer plenty of stuff for everyone to do. Uh, the Big Green has set up, you know, basically four straight days of activities. Um, on Friday, you can head over to Crocodile Rock. Um, as long as you're wearing Marshall gear, you'll get in for free. No RSVP necessary. Uh, it starts at 830. Um, that is owned by a couple of Marshall alums. And as soon as we got the bid, they, they reached out wanted to do something, so they're, they're hosting Marshall fans um, at their restaurant on Friday night. Um, Saturday, there's two different events, both at uh, the, the boardwalk there. Uh, there's a pep rally at 5 o'clock for Marshall University. Uh, the UConn pep rally takes place after ours, uh, but our cheer, dance, and band will be there, um, and it'll just be a good community pep rally at boardwalk. And then immediately following that at 7 o'clock, uh, once again, come to Wild Wing Cafe, um, I'm sure a lot of people know Wild Wing Cafe is a is a Marshall restaurant. Walt Garnett passed away uh, about a year ago now, but uh, he was a great Marshall supporter, donor, alumni, um, and he owned that place, and it, it's a great place. There's a lot of Marshall memorabilia there. Um, Sunday night, we're still in the works of finding everything and making sure that uh, we have a good place for our fans to go, but we will host something Sunday night as well. And then Monday, there's a, there's a, a tailgate sponsored by uh, the Big Green and Dutch Miller. Um, and so it's going to be $55 for all you can eat, all you can drink, beer and wine from 11 to two. And so, you know, once you get down there, there's plenty of events to attend. There's plenty of places to go, um, and, and hang out with fellow hurt fans. So if you're on the verge of going and you're like, well, I'm not sure who we're going to hang out with or who else is going, just come on down. I promise you there'll be a bunch of hurt fans to hang out with and, and get to know. Ryan Chris was with us, associate athletics director, annual giving ticket sales and fan engagement. So these events that you mentioned, obviously are Marshall sponsored events. Is this a bowl where it's going to be more of the surroundings are the event, not maybe bowl sponsored events. And of course in unison with the things that you're doing is, is that the experience more so than what the bowl is generating? Yeah, I think especially when you go to a bowl in Florida, there is more fan events just because of the timing of the year and you know the weather. Um, so that's why, you know, in years past, we haven't done this in the events, but we felt like it was needed because there isn't as many events um, sponsored by the bowl. So we wanted to host our own parties, our own get togethers um, and make sure that our fans feel like they have a place to go uh, once they get down there. Ryan Chris was with us. So the tickets are still available, but get those soon. If you are looking to help the program with donation tickets, uh, contact the ticket office. There are plenty of things to do. You got the game itself, obviously. That's the big draw here. Marshall taking on UConn, uh, and you you mentioned that this could be as long as you've been there. This could be among the highest of tickets for herd fans. Are you willing to put a number out there just yet? Maybe how many fans are we looking at? You know, if 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 
as things stay on course and we continue at the rate we're continuing for the next couple of days, you know, naturally it will slow down at some point just when people make plans, they buy the tickets. So it'll slow down at some point. Uh, but if I had to guess, you know, just tickets bought through us, uh, we'll be somewhere in the, in the 3,000 range, I would say. Um, and so that would compete with Boca Raton in 2014 uh, when we went down there and played NIU with Rakeem Cato and Tommy Schuler, um, and then also the Gasparilla Bowl in 2018. Uh, both of those games are very highly attended, but it'll compete with those. And, you know, we, we know that fans are going to purchase tickets through other, through other avenues, and so I'm confident we'll have more than 3,000 fans down there. Just as, as terms of people purchasing tickets through us, I feel pretty confident that, you know, we will get to that number and maybe very well surpass that number. I wouldn't be surprised if there are several more because I kind of consider um, that whole area sort of like East Huntington. It's, it's West Virginia's second capital, I do believe. I it, believe that's the official terminology. Is it West Virginia's second capital? I, I always felt like that was like East Huntington. It was like the East and Huntington, <laughs> maybe. Um, I mean, I, I might be off a little bit on my geography, but it, it does feel like it's the East end of Huntington. Maybe, maybe the um, the south southeastern coordinate. I don't know. I don't know. You know, just to kind of get a feel for it. But it's definitely a second home for a lot of West Virginia residents. So you found that. Even though this is a familiar location to a lot of West Virginians, it's been an exciting destination so far. Is that the, that's the feedback, obviously, you're getting. For sure. And I think, you know, if you can't, we understand it's a Monday at 2.30. So not everyone can just say, hey, sorry, I'm going to miss Monday and Tuesday at work. And, you know, not everyone's going to be able to come. Um, so if you're not able to come, I encourage you to purchase donation tickets to help support the program. And then also, you know, we are going to host a watch party in the Henderson Center. Um, our basketball team plays that night at seven o'clock against Glenville state. Um, the watch party will begin at two 30 when the bowl game starts. Uh, the first 200 fans will get free water, free bottle of water and free popcorn. Um, and you know, it's going to be free admission to come to the watch party. And whether you have a basketball ticket or not, if you come to the watch party and stick around, you can stay, uh, at the basketball game for free that night and watch a, a thundering hurt team. That's pretty exciting. And, um, you know, has a 7-1 record right now, their their best start in um, 10 years. So, you know, if, if you're not able to come, you know, sneak over to the Henson Center at 2.30, get you some popcorn, get some water. Concession stand will be open as well. Um, Hoops Family Children's Hospital is going to be there, and they will be accepting donations at the door. Um, and so it's going to be it's going to be a great time. And, you know, we wanted to provide a place for our fans to go if they weren't able to um, get over to Myrtle Beach. And so I think that's a great option. And then stick around for the basketball game that night. All right, free popcorn and water and watching the game on the scoreboard in the Henderson Center and then stick around for the basketball game. And rumor has it the new court will be down by that point. Um, it will be down. We are going to unleash the court uh, for the men's game. It would be on the 17th. would be their first game on the new court. Um, the ladies, I believe, play the day before that. So um, it will be down for those games. Um, the banners will be up in hurt heaven. Um, and also, knock on wood, if everything goes as planned, we'll also be able to start selling beer on that day as well. So uh, it'll be a new rebrand of the cam, and it'll be a good time. And um, come check out the new court. Come check out the new things. And, you know, we're, we're trying to improve the fan experience. We know we got a long way to go, uh, but we felt like we made great strides early on here. And, um, you know, the new court, the banners, the beer, that, that'll obviously help that fan experience. Her country, right? Her country. I, I hear that's a, that's, right. that's a beverage. That's right. It's a good one at that. If you haven't tried it yet, make sure you try it. Where's my herd energy drink? How are we doing on that? You know, we, so I don't know if you saw, but we did partner with Bang and we did give away some bangs and we're giving away bangs to students for the rest of the year. Um, and so, you know, we, we have a, a short term solution. We're still working on a long term solution, but uh, I believe I gave that project to you, Paul. So we'll, we'll work on it together and we'll, uh, we'll get it done. Hey, remember, uh, Mr. Spears said stay in my lane. Remember that? Oh, that's correct. Yeah, yeah so correct. that delegates yeah. back to you. Once once we get it, you can take the credit for it. I will. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> my idea. I, I will. I, obviously, I will. <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah, Spears, your boss, he's talking about like sparkling water or something, you know, her branded sparkling water. No, <laughs> no. No. We need some herd juice. Yeah, we need something with caffeine, a lot of it. And, um, That's right. Yeah, so I'm glad you're with me on that. Ryan Crisp is with me. He's got the super long title of Associate Athletics Director for Annual Giving, Ticket Sales, and Fan Engagement. Who's got the longer title? Uh, who has a longer title than you? 
Um, you know, I'm not sure if anyone does. Deborah Bouton may. She's a deputy AD for championship resources and planning and maybe something else. So, you know, you, ne- you never know with Christian. Whenever he hires a new person, he likes to, you know, give you lots of titles and responsibilities. And so um, you just you just never know. He could ease that up a little bit for you guys. So associate athletic director of other duties assigned. Period. <laughs> that, that that was short. Everyone's business card will read the same, but it was short. <laughs> It would it would ease up a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Here's Ryan right. Crisp, the uh, Associate Athletic Director of Other Duties Assigned. That's right. Good talk to you, man. Uh, we'll do this again soon. And um, are you going to the bowl or you're sticking around for the uh, for the basketball game? What's, uh, what's I think role? I will go to the bowl. Um, obviously, it's going to be a lot of tickets to dish out. We're, uh, we got the tickets in yesterday, and so we're behind the scenes building everything um, in our ticketing system. And so hopefully we can get that done tomorrow and – get tickets allocated on Friday and then ship them out in the mail Monday and get as many as we can out of here. But it'll be, uh, it'll be a lot of tickets that we'll call that we'll have to dish out. So we'll have hotel lobby hours. So be on the lookout for that. If you chose to have your tickets that we'll call, uh, or if you bought late, we weren't able to mail them out to you. So it, it'll be good. And I'll be down there and, uh, we'll, we'll bring a lot of herd fans down there with us. Okay. Glad, glad you clarified that. I was going to ask, I should have asked if it was going to be digital tickets or physical. So it's going to be physical. Yeah, we went with the physical for the bowl game. I feel like people like that uh, that keepsake um, and having an actual ticket for that game. Um, and so we went with the digital tickets for anyone that buys through us. You'll, you'll get a, a hard hard stock ticket. Brian Chris joining me, the Associate Athletic Director, Annual Giving, Ticket Sales, and Fan Engagement. Uh, we'll do this again soon. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. And uh, have fun on the – if I don't see you sooner, uh, have fun on the bowl trip. All right, Paul. I appreciate it. It's Ryan Chris. We will continue with your phone calls and texts. The text line now is open, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. More on this edition of The Drive coming up. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Our text line is open, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Thanks for being a part of today's edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Texter wrote in and is asking me uh, about uh, the transfer portal. Says, I'm afraid Pennington might head to the portal. What do you think? Go ahead, rock on. That is from Holmes. Okay. I'm going to give you a case for why, and I'm going to give you a case for why not. The case for why. Could anyone live up to the legacy of Chad Pennington? Could anyone? Chad is near perfect. Chad is in a conversation all to himself. He is deity-like. And the love for Chad Pennington that Hurt fans still have. Chad Pennington's a big deal. Injuries kept him from having an even more promising NFL career. He was a pretty big deal with the Jets. Jets fans still remember him fondly. He's a big deal. And now you're asking a Pennington to be the starting quarterback at Marshall University and live up to that legacy. And and hopefully, if he does become a starter at Marshall University, that he goes out and makes his own legacy and doesn't worry about anything that his father did. So, yeah, that's got to be tough. I mean, you could go somewhere else and just be Cole Pennington quarterback. Yeah, your your father's a pretty big deal, but that doesn't mean anything in another school. At Marshall University, the – Mount Rushmore conversation always features Chad Pennington, Randy Moss, Byron Lefwich. Who am I forgetting? Do we do we decide? Was it Troy Brown? Did John Elmore get some get some rock time on that thing? Yeah, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, Marshall University, Chad Pennington. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Asking his kid to come and be the starting quarterback at Marshall University. Uh, no pressure whatsoever. All right, that's a, a case for it. Here's the, the case against it. Um, he's got a great support system. His family supports him. He wants to be at Marshall University, and maybe he wants to develop into his own man, 
and he sees that, okay, it's going to take some time. You know, maybe he's going to be the starter next year. We don't know. Maybe he'll win the position. Maybe Cam Fancher won't. Who knows? Cam's got a head start right now on it. And there's been some competition eliminated. P. Zamora stepping away from Marshall University, moving elsewhere. So, obviously, there's an avenue for either being the backup, the quarterback in waiting, or you know maybe he wins the job. I don't know. I don't think that uh, Cole Pennington leaves. I, I could be completely wrong. And of course, he can make his own mind up and make that decision tomorrow. But I think... I think he stays. I think he sticks around. In the interim, anyway. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. I'd like to see another Pennington quarterback there. But again, yeah, he's going to be his own man. He's going to be his own person. He's not going to be Chad Pennington. There will never be another Chad Pennington ever to quarterback Marshall University. Now, there might be the first Cole Pennington to the quarterback the herd. And his story could be completely different. He could be better than his father. Think about that. Maybe he's a yeah. He's going to explode. He can be better than his father. What about that? He's got good lineage. I mean, he he knows some football. I would think his dad's pretty smart. His dad was a Rhodes Scholar, right? Yeah. Pretty good in the classroom. Really good IQ. Really smart, smart quarterback. Tough, tough as nails. Smart, strong arm. Randy Moss left, and you know what? His production didn't drop off. So it wasn't all Randy Moss. So now, no, I, I think um I think we might see a Pennington at quarterback again. Give me the best quarterback. Quarterback is going to win the game, and I think the quarterback competition, even though Cam Fancher right now is going to be the guy leading the team in the bowl game, maybe just maybe the quarterback competition is going to heat up. I'm not going to declare Cam the heir apparent here to the the quarterback position for for the foreseeable future, but at the same time, I do understand that he's got a, a slight advantage there. Transfer portal, you're not guaranteed anything. That's the thing that sometimes you forget. You're not guaranteed anything. You enter the transfer portal, and if you're in a good position now, and you try to get on the transfer portal, you might not find success because there are so many people out there putting themselves in the transfer portal. Now, if football is all you care about, and you want to try to find the best football spot for you, give it a shot, sure. But there are a lot of people who also care about having access to the education because that goes away. You don't get to be – if if you're getting a ride, you don't get to keep that. I'm going to put myself in the transfer portal. Well, hey, thanks. Obviously, we're not paying for you anymore to be here. We're not, uh, we're not footing the bill. You lose that for a lot of student athletes that have guaranteed scholarships, have an opportunity to get a good education, don't like the situation at the football team. So I'm leaving. And if you don't find another opportunity, see, that's what I worry about. That's that's exactly what I worry about. A lot of people are not making this decision wisely trying to find a, a good situation for you. And honestly, let's uh, let's be honest. Not that many of these quarterbacks are going to make it to the next level. Not this not that many. Everybody has dreams of getting the NFL. Not that many are going to get into the NFL. Henry Columbia not going to the NFL. Transferred in, didn't work out, not going to the NFL. And that's what a lot of these uh, players are doing. They're trying, to, they're trying to get playing time. they got aspirations for the next level. And I worry about the ones that don't find a landing spot, what happens to them. So that concerns me a little bit. Coming up tomorrow, Marshall 
taking on Duquesne. It's a battle of two teams hot right now. Duquesne's won six straight. Last time Duquesne lost, it was against number four, Kentucky. Thundering Herd lost to Queens in the opener on the road. Ever since, the Thundering Herd's been hot. What happens? We got it for you tomorrow here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And on 93.7, the dog as Marshall making the road trip. Haven't been on the road in a while, so we'll see how the herd reacts to going on the road. First of three on the road. Should be fun. We have it for you coming up tomorrow. Duquesne, even though it doesn't look like Duquesne. Duquesne. It, yeah, it's Duquesne, but no, it, it, you say it Duquesne. They're pretty good this year. Tough one against Kentucky, but beating all the teams that that program should beat. Just one loss to Kentucky. Everything else is a win. All the wins are, are wins I think Duquesne team should usually win. Uh, the rest of their schedule is pretty tough. They've got New Mexico State on the schedule. They've got DePaul, Indiana State. Uh, they've got Winthrop on the schedule as well. Uh, then they get into A-10 play. And A-10 play is not easy to say anything. It is not easy. So they got a pretty solid classic uh, Duquesne-level schedule here. And it uh, they should be pretty good again this year. So we should see it tomorrow. It should be fun here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Going to be fun. I know I've said that several times now. Going to be fun, but I think so. I think it's going to be fun. I'm trying to sell you on the broadcast. That's uh, part of my job here, selling you on the broadcast. So we've got that coming up for you tomorrow. And, of course, uh, that means uh, we've got the show at 5. We'll have the pregame at 6, postgame afterwards. I believe we will hear from the head coach, Dan D'Antoni, after the game. So uh, we've got that in store for you. We'll get your comments, phone calls. We'll get all of that, everything tomorrow. And that's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for tuning in. Be back with you tomorrow here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930.